Talk about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And... Welcome back to the Scored Sports Podcast. On those, this podcast land, Frank, we're now episode 115. It's for 115 episodes through, and this is our March Madness Special, the annual tradition, the third March Madness Special ever, one for two on picking champions. I picked Illinois 2021. I picked Kansas last year. Let's go with again. Who's going to be my champion? We're going to fill out every single game. I have the custom Scored Sports bracket. It's amazing. March Madness, best time of year. Get excited to see my whole entire bracket. That's the whole episode. Let's hop into it. Episode 115, March Madness Special. All right, it's that time. March Madness, we're going to fill out our picks right now. The number one overall seed, Alabama, is going up against the winner of Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, or Southern Missouri State. Both teams won their conference. Alabama is obviously going to win this one. I don't see a UMBC, Virginia type of game happening here. Give me Alabama. They move on to the round 32. They're playing Birmingham. That's an easy win for them right there in Birmingham and Alabama. Yeah, they got a great advantage right now. Alabama wins easily. Maryland or West Virginia? Eight versus nine games are very hard to predict because they're toss-ups. There's a lot of crazy eight versus nine games this year. Arkansas, Illinois. I still don't know who I picked to win that game. I know who I'm picking to win this game, though. Maryland over West Virginia. That's my eight versus nine. Sorry, Bob Huggins. Kevin Willard, first year at Maryland, they've done some good things. They'll play Alabama in round 32. We're going to take this region by region instead of round by round. San Diego State versus Charleston, 5 versus 12. Obviously, that's the one everybody loves to look at. Charleston, 31-3 in the year, was ranked for a long period of time. I like San Diego State. Give me the Aztecs, 27-6. and six. Mountain West, they're playing really well right now. I like San Diego State. Let's go SDSU into round 32. Virginia or Furman? Virginia obviously was top 10 team most of the year. Then it starts struggling a little bit. Then Ben Vanderplas breaks his hand in the ACC tournament. They lose to Duke in the ACC tournament championship game. A lot of people like Furman, the Paladins, because they have great guard play. I'm going to tell you this right here. Stay away from this upset. Virginia wins this game. Virginia is too good on defense. Even though they lost to Duke, you see that game. They're struggling because they're so hard to play with Virginia. Virginia, really tough to play against because the style of basketball they play. This team... Tony Bennett won a championship about three years ago. Let's see if they can repeat this year. Virginia over Furman, four versus 13. Give me Virginia. Virginia versus San Diego State in the round 32. We're going to pick down a little bit. Creighton or North Carolina State. I like Creighton this matchup. North Carolina State has a lot of great shooters on that team, but Creighton been hot pretty much the whole year. Had a little weird stretch in there after the Maui tournament, Maui Invitational, where they lost to Arizona. They lost to a few weird teams like... San Francisco, Nebraska, Arizona State, but Creighton gets their revenge right here. They beat North Carolina State to move on to the round 32. Baylor or UCSB? UC Santa Barbara was in the tournament a few years ago against Creighton. That was against Marcus Zagorowski's team. But I like Baylor in this one. Struggled in the Big 12 tournament, obviously, against Iowa State. 10 losses on the year, three seed. I think they should have been a, bit, a little bit lower, maybe a four seed, but Baylor wins this one. They move on to the round 32 where they'll play Creighton. Missouri or Utah State? Utah State sitting at 26 and 8 right now. That's a pretty good record. Missouri sitting at 24-9. Missouri started the season amazing. and They got off to a 13-1 start. And then they struggled. And then they picked things back up when they got a buzzer being winning against Tennessee. I think they picked things back up again. Missouri moves on to the round 32. They collect a tournament win in their head coach's first year at the program. Missouri, it's around 32. Arizona at Princeton, 2 versus 15. I might have a 2 versus 15 upset coming, but not in this one. Give me Arizona over Princeton, no doubt about it. The Ivy League goes down early to Arizona. Alabama or Maryland in the round 32. This can be a really close game. Maryland can play with some guts, but it's in Birmingham. I like Alabama. First real scare for Alabama, in my opinion. Alabama, close against Maryland. San Diego State or Virginia? This is a good game. This are two really good defensive teams. It's about who's going to play better offense in this one. I think that team is going to be Virginia. Virginia moves on to Sweet 16. You can have Virginia losing round one to Furman. I think you're crazy. I think they made Sweet 16 versus Alabama. You'd say, oh, they've been playing terrible as of late. This is still a really good team. I like Virginia into the Sweet 16. Creighton or Baylor? Creighton was a Final Four prediction by me preseason. I think they lose right here. I like Jonathan Twama Chua JTD. I like Adam Flagler. I like LJ Cryer. I like Keontae George stepping up, even though they've lost a few games. They still have a win over Texas in the past month. I like Baylor in this one over Creighton. Creighton ends their season. I really thought Creighton would be better this season. They had some really good start. Then they had a really bad stretch. Then they had a really good stretch. And then the Big East tournament, they failed mightily. So I like Baylor in this one over Creighton into the Sweet 16. Missouri or Arizona, the winner will meet Baylor in the Sweet 16. I like Arizona cruising in this matchup. I really love this Arizona team. The Pac-12 champions move on to the Sweet 16. 
Alabama or Virginia. Okay, here's where we get interesting. Here's where we get the first real big matchups of the first region that we have right here in the squared sports bracket. Sweet 16, Alabama, Virginia. Alabama has a few losses on the year. They lost to UConn early in the season. They lost to Gonzaga early in the season. They lost to Oklahoma in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. They lost to Tennessee, and that's about it. Now they play a really tough team on defense like Virginia. Kihei Clark, senior guard. He's made the Final Four before. He's won a national championship before. He's been in these moments. You have Reese Beekman, really good guard. Ben Vanderplas is out, but they can still stack up. They have Shredrick, good forward. I'm going to pull the upset because I think Brandon Miller is the only lifeline that this Alabama team has. And if you shut him down, you're going to win. That's exactly what Gonzaga did against Alabama. Even though they let Brandon Miller have 30 points on them, they still won that game because they put up 100. I'm not saying Virginia can put up 100. I'm saying it's going to be a defensive battle, and I like Virginia into the lead eight. Like I said, you can have Virginia losing round one. You're out of your mind. Virginia makes it the lead eight. Baylor or Arizona? I think Arizona cruises away with this one. Scott Drew kind of takes his loss. I think he beats Greg McDermott. That's kind of their highlight of their season in the round 32, Creighton. But they move on to Sweet 16 and get absolutely chopped by Arizona. I really like this Arizona team. Courtney Ramey, Zulus Tobilis, Umar Balu, Kirk Krisha. Experienced team after a really rough tournament run last year, losing the Sweet 16 as the number two team in the country. So Virginia, Arizona in the lead eight. Who goes on to the final four out of our first region in the March Madness bracket? Let's break it down. Arizona, Courtney Ramey, great guard. Umar Balo, great forward. Really good point guard, Kirk Krishaw. You look at Virginia side of things, Reese Beekman, but you don't have a guy like Ben Vanderplas. How does that affect it when you go up against a guy like Azulis Tobilis? I like Arizona into the Final Four. Really good offensive squad, really good defensive squad. Tommy Lloyd really loves to recruit outside the country. I think they have 11 foreign players. They're really great right now. Arizona moves on to the Final Four after a rough Tournament run last year. Really good, experienced squad. They know how to get things done. Give me Arizona into the Final Four over Virginia. That's Region 1. We have three more regions to fill out until we decide our national champion. Let's hop into it. Purdue or the winner of Texas Southern, Fairline Dixon. Texas Southern kind of did an interesting thing this year. They rested their players the whole entire regular season. They went 14-20 and 20 because they knew they were a good squad. They knew they could win their conference. So they said, let's do load management. Let's rest all our guys. They got a horrible seed in their conference tournament, and they won the whole conference. So... It's a little bit interesting strategy right there. But now, no upset right here. Purdue into the round 32 over Texas Southern. Memphis or Florida Atlantic? I've seen Florida Atlantic play in person. They have a 7'3 center from Russia. They have Michael Forrest, who is top five in the all-time NCAA scoring list. This is a great team. But you also have Memphis, who won the American Conference. They have guys like Kendrick Davis, Keontae Candy. They can defend well if they need to. They can score well. This is going to be a really interesting game. I like Florida Atlantic because of Michael Forrest, because of their center. I think this golden, really good center. I think they win this one. FAU moving on to the round 32 where they will play Purdue. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Duke or Oral Roberts. I really think Duke got a really tough draw right here because Duke won the ACC, didn't have that many losses. They're sitting at 26 and 8 right now. And a 10 3 seed like Baylor, 22 and 10. They're a three seed right now. Duke, 26 and 8. They're a five seed. And they also get a really tough matchup with Oral Roberts. This is tough for Oral Roberts, too. They're 30 and 4. It's a good squad. This team made the Sweet 16 two years ago. Max Amos still on that team. If they weren't playing Duke, I think they might win this game, but they're playing Duke. Duke is going to be a really good team. They're going to have a great run. Maybe to the Final Four, maybe to the championship, maybe winning it all. We're just going to have to wait and see. But Duke beats Oral Roberts. Five over 12. No upset right here. So no 12 over fives yet. There might be some coming later. Or Roberts loses to Duke. In a close game, though, Max Amos puts up a good fight. Maybe his last college game ever. Tennessee, Louisiana. A lot of people are taking Louisiana this matchup. I don't believe that. I don't think they lose this game, Tennessee. Yes, they had a rough SEC tournament. You're without your starting point guard, Zakai Ziegler, for the rest of the year. But since Santiago, Muscovy can do some things. Give me Tennessee beating Louisiana. Tennessee over to the round 32. They'll play Duke. Kentucky or Providence? Providence, good coach. Ed Cooley, obviously John Calipari, amazing coach for Kentucky. Kentucky has too much talent to lose this game. Six over 11, no doubt about it. Don't question it. Kentucky moves on to round 32, where they will play the winner of Montana State. 14 over threes don't typically happen. I think 15 over twos maybe even happen more. Kansas State, good squad. They beat Montana State. Montana State made the tournament last year. They lost Texas Tech. So good for them, making the tournament again. Michigan State or USC? This is an interesting matchup. Obviously, you have Joey Hauser, You have Tyson Walker, AJ Hoggard, Maddie Sissoko from Michigan State. I think that's too much for USC to handle. They beat USC. Boogie Ellis, Drew Peterson don't have too much to go with this one. Give me Michigan State over USC in Greensboro. Marquette or Vermont? No 15 over 2 in this one. Give me Marquette. I really like how they play. They won the Big East. David Joplin, Tyler Kolick, one of the best guards in the country, if not the best guard in the country, playing really well right now. I like Marquette over Vermont. Now, let's move to the top of the bracket. 
Round 32, Purdue or Florida Atlantic? Let's do it. Biggest upset of this tournament so far. Florida Atlantic takes down Purdue. You know who can guard Zach Eady? Florida Atlantic 7 for 3 center. That who can do it right there. You know who can also score on Purdue? Michael Forrest. That's amazing right there. Florida Atlantic over Purdue. Even if Michael Forrest doesn't do well, he can cook later on in the game. There's other guys who would step up in his position. I like Florida Atlantic, the Conference USA winner, beating Purdue into the Sweet 16. Number one seed, gone. Just like that. Duke or Tennessee. I like Duke in this matchup. I think they win kind of handily. I'm a Michigan fan. Obviously, Michigan beat Tennessee last year in the NCAA tournament, so they have a little bit more experience now. I still think they lose, though. Santiago Vascovi doesn't do well. Euros Plazvik doesn't match up well with Derek Lively. I like Duke in this one. To beat Tennessee, they'll play Florida Atlantic in the Sweet 16. Kentucky or Kansas State? Okay, Kansas State. Keontae Johnson came from the SEC. They've played him before. He's their best player. This is still a good squad. Kansas State, they've had a rough few games. They lost TCU in the Big 12 tournament. I think their ride ends right here. Jerome Tang. Very good first year at Kansas State. Nothing to hold your head low about. This is a great season. Becoming a three seed, your first season as a collegiate head coach. That's amazing. Kentucky, though, wins this one there into the Sweet 16. Good ride for them. Marquette or Michigan State, kind of a battle of the Midwest, pretty much. Marquette playing in the Big East. Michigan State playing in the Big Ten. Marquette over in Wisconsin. Then, obviously, Michigan State over in Michigan. So, Marquette beats Michigan State in this one. I think their guard play is too quick for Michigan State to handle. It'll be interesting. I think it'll be a really close game. But David Joplin and Tyler Cook outmatch AJ Hoggard. And Tyson Walker. That's my pick right there. Kentucky versus Marquette in that Sweet 16 matchup. Let's move to the top of the bracket one more time. Florida Atlantic or Duke? Who makes the lead eight out of this region? I like Duke. I think Duke runs away with this one. Florida Atlantic, still a good squad there. Uh, run ends right here. That's a great one for you right there. If you can beat Purdue, that's a program changing win if you can beat Purdue. They're in Conference USA, but they have the best resources in Conference USA over in Boca. They have amazing jerseys. Not saying that's going to help, but they got swag. They're a good team. Florida Atlantic, they beat Purdue. And then they lose to Duke in the Sweet 16. Duke over to the lead eight, where they will face the winner of Kentucky versus Marquette. Marquette, they like to create turnovers. Kentucky likes to turn over the ball a lot. So Marquette wins this one. Their speed beats Kentucky. Oscar Sheboy can put up a good fight, but can he disappear in late in games sometimes? So I like Marquette winning that one. We have Duke versus Marquette to find our second Final Four team to face Arizona. Duke or Marquette, who do you have if you think this matchup happens? I'm going to take Duke. I think Duke wins this one. Great point guard play. Jeremy Roach, you can play off ball. Tyrese Proctor, amazing. Mark Mitchell, pretty good. Derek Lively's came on us late in the defensive end. And then Kyle Flipowski, ACC Rookie of the Year, wins this one for them. Duke into the Final Four. They'll play Arizona. Let's move over to the third region that we have right now. Houston as the one seed in this one. They'll play in Birmingham against Northern Kentucky. I like Houston in this one. No debate about it. No 16 over one. No 16 over ones at all in this tournament. Don't think, even think about it. Iowa or Auburn. Another one of those toss-ups. Eight versus nine matchups. Kind of the Power 5 teams where they've had some good stretches, some bad stretches. Iowa shooting can go disappear late in games. We've seen that happen before. So I like Auburn in this one. Over Iowa. They make it to the round 32 where they will play Houston. It's in Birmingham, Alabama, obviously Auburn in Alabama. So I think Auburn kind of gets that home court advantage. They win this one. They beat Iowa to play Houston in round 32. Miami or Drake? Not the rapper, Drake the school. Miami, Florida, obviously won the ACC regular season. Couldn't do much in the ACC tournament, lost to Duke. I like Drake in this one. I do. Drake, they won their conference. They beat Bradley. I watched that conference championship game. That was a great game. They really just outmatched them on every facet of the game. And Miami struggled. Can they do stuff outside of their guard play? Can Jordan Miller play well? Can Isaiah Long play well consistently? Can Charlie Moore play well consistently? I don't know. I like Drake over Miami. Indiana or Kent State? I've seen Kent State play a lot this year. They almost beat Houston. They almost beat Gonzaga. And they've also almost lost to a few other teams. Keyword, almost. They can't pull the upset. They're not going to right here. Trace Jackson Davis, too much. Kent State to handle. Give me Indiana. They move on to the round 32. They'll play Drake. Iowa State or Mississippi State? First pit. Mississippi State versus Pitt. I think the winner of that game is going to be Mississippi State. So Iowa State versus Mississippi State. I think Iowa State wins that one. Ever since their guard, Caleb Grills, got dismissed, they've been playing well, which is kind of surprising. Iowa State they had a good run. The Big 12 tournament, they won this one as a 16-seed. Six six no 11 over 6 upset right here. Iowa State into the round 32. Xavier or Kennesaw State? I really love Xavier. Sule Boom. No one from his time at UTEP. No one from other things. Great point guard. Yes, he disappeared in that Big East championship game against Marquette, but he showed out against Creighton in the semifinal. Xavier beats Kennesaw State there into the round 32. They'll play Iowa State. A&M or Penn State? Jalen Pickett for Penn State. Amazing. They made the Big Ten championship game. Texas A&M made the SEC championship game. SEC has been a better conference this year than Big Ten has. So I like Texas A&M into the round 32. They win this one close over Penn State. They locked down Jalen Pickett. I really like Texas A&M. I think they're a good squad. They can maybe make a championship run, whatever it might be. Lead eight run. A lot of people have to AM into the lead eight. 
Wouldn't be the craziest idea. Let's see how it plays out. Texas or Colgate? No 15 over two. Give me Texas. No debate about it. I really love Texas. Timmy Allen, Serge Barry Rice, really good squad in my opinion. Marcus Carr, Tyree Sunder, really matured over late in the season, being dealt with those tough circumstances, the Chris Beard uh, situation. Ronnie Terry's done a great job winning the Big 12 for Texas, really lapped Kansas in that championship game. They just crushed them in that game. Houston or Auburn out in Birmingham. This game could get interesting. Auburn, obviously in Alabama. Home court advantage for them, you could say. I like Auburn losing this one still, though. Houston's still a good squad. Unconcerned about Marcus Sasser's health. I think they're going to be fine. Marcus Sasser, healthy or not healthy. Now he gets the Sweet 16, he's still not healthy. That's an issue. But uh, Houston does well in this one. They beat Auburn, they move on to the Sweet 16. Drake or Indiana? Drake already has their upset when they don't get another. Give me Indiana over Drake into the Sweet 16. We'll play Houston. Iowa State or Xavier? Good squad. Two really good teams. Both made the PK tournament earlier in the year. Xavier lost to Duke. Iowa State beat North Carolina that tournament, but they lost to Alabama. So I like Iowa State losing this one to Xavier. Xavier, without one of their best players, Xavier Fremantle, they're forward, but still have Sule Boom, still a few other guys on the perimeter. Sean Miller, really done a great job with this squad. Won the NIT last year, did a great job this year. Xavier beats Iowa State there into the Sweet 16. But they will play the winner of Texas A&M or Texas Battle of Texas. It's going to be a really fun game, but it's up in Des Moines, Iowa, so that's a little bit funny right there. I like Texas this one over Texas a &M. Close game. Really a tough scare for them right here. Texas moves on to the Sweet 16. Like I said, I love this Texas team. Houston or Indiana? Trace Jackson Davis, good player. Jalen Hochefino, good player. But Houston has some great guys too. Jarese Walker, Mark Sasser, Jamel Shedd. This team, if you're in a close game situation with them, you're not winning. Houston is going to win that close game situation. That's why I don't think Indiana gets to that close game situation. I think Indiana wins this game. They go over to the lead eight. Well, they will play Texas. Texas beats down on Xavier. It's an interesting thing to look out for right here if you do get this match. Rodney Terry, former coach of UTEP, now coach of Texas, played with Sule Boom. Sule Boom played for Rodney Terry at UTEP. So Rodney Terry might know all his ins and outs, or it could be the other way around. Sule Boom could struggle at times. I think Rodney Terry might be able to expose a little bit of that, even though I think Sule Boom's a great player. I like Texas moving on to the lead eight where they will play. Indiana. Who is our third Final Four team? Indiana or Texas? Trace Jackson Davis lead the Indiana Hoosiers back to the Final Four. Back to legacy. Mike Woodson lead them back to legacy? No. Texas makes the Final Four. Serge Barry Rice, Timmy Allen, Brock Cunningham. One thing this Texas team lacks is a big player, a big man, a big center, a true center. They don't have a player over six foot nine. Do they need to, though? They're playing great with their guards. Texas beats Indiana. I'm excited for that matchup. Trace Jackson Davis versus Texas. That could be interesting right there. Texas into the Final Four. Those are my three Final four teams. We have one region left, and that is Kansas's region. The number one seed. They were in this region last year, and they won the NCAA tournament. Can they do it again? Let's see. They'll play Howard round one. No upset right here. Give me Kansas over Howard. No debate about it. Next one, we have Arkansas versus Illinois. Eight versus nine matchup. I said earlier, I have no clue who was winning this game. I've seen both teams play. I'm a little bit more impressed with Arkansas. Illinois can go slow from shooting at times. Matthew Mayer can go cold. Melendez can go cold. Terrence Shane can go cold. Amy Black, Nick Smith, Ricky Council, they win this one for Arkansas. That's up. It's a round 32 matchup. Kansas versus Arkansas. Illinois goes down, ends their season. St. Mary's versus VCU. A little bit ironic right here. VCU has two players named Zeb Jackson and Brandon Johns. They transferred from Michigan. They made the NCAA tournament. Michigan didn't. I don't see a 5 versus 12 upset right here. Give me St. Mary's advancing over to the round 32. St. Mary's has some good wins over Gonzaga this year. They're a solid squad. Great guard play. Really like St. Mary's to make a run. St. Mary's into the round 32. UConn or Iona. Oh, that'll the Northeast. Really fun matchup. You got Rick Pitino's squad going against Danny Hurley's squad. Really good game. I think it's going to be a close game, maybe a one possession game. But I like UConn in this one. UConn was a 4 seed last year and got upset. I hope that doesn't happen again this year. UConn makes it over to the round 32 where they'll play St. Mary's. Arizona State, Nevada. The winner of Arizona State versus Nevada will play TCU. I like TCU winning this one. They advanced the round 32. TCU kind of got a tough draw, in my opinion. When they got some injuries later in the season, Eddie Lampkin, Mike Miles, that's kind of when they struggled. They're all healthy now. So TCU could look to make a run. They're in the round 32. Gonzaga or Grand Canyon? Grand Canyon. They're not making a run. Gonzaga, they beat Grand Canyon. No debate about it. Northwestern or Boise State? This game could get interesting right here. Northwestern, Boo Booey, great player. Good guard play. But you also have for Boise State, some good players. Boise State sitting at 24-9 on the season. They don't win this one. Give me Northwestern. Northwestern has two losses to Michigan. I'm not concerned about that, even though Michigan's pretty bad this year. And I'm saying that as a Michigan fan. Northwestern, it's the round 32. UCLA or UNC Asheville? UNC Asheville wins it. Here's one. You have Drew Pember. Gets to the line more than anybody in the country. Six foot nine. Can dominate 
anybody. They've beaten a good team like UCF this year. They have some good wins. UCLA, Adam Bono. I don't know if he's healthy in this game. They're Clark, the Phillips, one of their guards, towards Achilles, coming into the NCAA tournament. UCLA, a lot of injuries right now. I want to see how the matches up against UNC Asheville. A lot of people are talking about this upset. Nobody's really willing to pull it. I'm ready to pull this upset. The biggest upset I've ever called in March Madness ever. I've never called 15 over two. Never even called a 14 over three. Now I'm calling 15 over two. UNC Asheville happened the past two years where 15 beats a two. UNC Asheville makes it over UCLA. Every year there's always that bet. Oh, just bet every one and two C to advance. I don't know if that happens this year. UNC Asheville beats UCLA. Let's do it. I love that game right there. Drew Pember shows his strength, shows his squad. I think they really went out in this one. UCLA could have won that Pac-12. Jaime Hawkins, Tiger Campbell, Amari Bailey. These guys' college careers end on a side note right here. UNC Asheville makes the round 32. Kansas, Arkansas. Arkansas can give the rain champs a scare. But I like Kansas to win this one. Arkansas, really good squad, really good talent. Eric Boston, let's see if you can piece it all together. I think they get a win. I like Kansas into Sweet 16. Hopefully, Bill Self will be healthy by then. Yes. Their coach, Bill Self, missed the whole entire Big 12 tournament due to illness. St. Mary's or UConn, it's going to be a good game, good guard play. Look for Tristan Newton and Adama Sonogo connection right here to win it for UConn. They make it to 16. You got Damian Hurley into 316 for his first time at UConn. College basketball is better when UConn's better. UConn into 316. TCU or Gonzaga, I like Gonzaga. Mark Few, this team's more experienced than they were last year. I like Gonzaga into Sweet 16. Northwestern, UNC Asheville. This is not a matchup people were predicting earlier in the year. Northwestern was projected to be one of the worst Power 6 teams in college basketball. And then UNC Asheville, obviously not. Northwestern beats UNC Asheville, though. I think they end UNC Asheville's ride. No Sweet 16 run this year, in my opinion. Or Roberts made the Sweet 16. St. Peter's made a lead eight last year. I don't see that happening this year. I think UNC Asheville's ride ends right here. So my biggest Cinderella right now is Ford Atlantic into the Sweet 16. So we have Northwestern versus Gonzaga, Kansas versus UConn in our Sweet 16 matchups. Kansas or UConn, it's going to be a really fun matchup. UConn, Tristan Newton, Adam Sonogo, Donovan Clinigan. You have great guard play. I'm going to do it. UConn makes the lead eight. They're into the lead eight where they will play Gonzaga. They beat Northwestern. Northwestern makes Sweet 16. That's great for you right there. Gonzaga versus UConn in the lead eight to make the final four or final final four spot to round out the regions. This is going to be a good game. Big East team versus West Coast team. I like Gonzaga in this one. Making the Final Four for the first time since that Jalen Suggs year. Let's see if they can make a championship. That's rounding out our regions. Heading into the Final Four. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back. All right, it's the Squared Sports third ever Final Four set. Arizona, Texas, Duke, and Gonzaga. Rodney Terry, first year head coach at Texas. Tommy Lloyd over at Arizona, his second year as a head coach. Duke, John Shire, first year as a head coach. And then Gonzaga, Mark Few, make his third ever. Final four. It's going to be great. Texas versus Gonzaga. Arizona versus Duke. Let's break it down. In Houston, it's a really good team. Really good final four. Texas favors a little bit because obviously Houston, Texas, close to Austin, Texas, where Texas plays. Houston would have obviously loved to be in this one position right here. They're playing at the Rocket Stadium, so Houston would have loved to be in this situation in the final four. But they lost in the Sweet 16 to Indiana. So now we go right here. Arizona or Duke? Duke has been a really good team all year. But they had some struggles. Derek Whitehead can be injured. Derek Lively cannot do anything on offense sometimes. I think Azulis Tabellas can be really good. I think Courtney Ramey can be a great guard, but they also tend to struggle with some lower level teams. I think they overcome the spheres that NCAA tournament. That's why they're in the Final Four. Mark Mitchell, I don't know how he does in this one. I don't know how Jamie Roach does, junior guard. Duke unfortunately loses for the second straight year in the Final Four. Let's go Arizona. Tommy Lloyd into National Championship. Now does he play his mentor, Mark Few, where he was at Gonzaga for so many years as an assistant, or does he play... Ronnie Terry, Texas interim head coach. I don't know if an interim to ever win the national championship might happen this season. Texas or Gonzaga was a matchup earlier in the year where Texas absolutely blew the brakes off Gonzaga. That was in Austin. Now we're in Houston. Not too big of a difference. Texas really good squad. But Gonzaga, too. Drew Timmy, how does he play in this one? Julian Strother, Malachi Smith, Hunter Salis. I think Gonzaga loses this one still. Give me Texas. Marcus Carr, too much. For Gonzaga, for the Bulldogs, that Marcus Carr, Tyrese Hunter, 1-1 combo. So good. And they mix in Timmy Allen in there. Really good squad right here. Really good guard play. Again, the issue, not having a true center has that match against Drew Timmy. I still think Texas wins. Give me Texas into the National Championship game. We get a Southwest National Championship. Arizona versus Texas out in Houston. Couldn't have painted it better. Tommy Lloyd versus Ronnie Terry. We're going to pick it when we get back. Time has come. I have the National Championship winner. Right here with you. A big sign of the national championship winner. Who's going to be? Arizona or Texas? Tommy Lloyd. 
great head coach. Courtney Raymond, great point guard. Azul's two belts, amazing. Rodney Terry, put in an unprecedented situation at Texas this year. Didn't have much success at UTEP, goes over to Texas as an assistant, gets the head coaching job in an interesting situation, has done a great job. Marcus Carr, great transfer guard. Tyrese Hunter, great transfer guard. Brock Cunningham, good veteran. Timmy Allen, great player, good squad. And then for Arizona, same thing. You got so many European foreign players. It's going to be a great championship game. But is it Hook and Morins or is it Bear Down for Arizona? Here's my national championship pick. The 2023 Schoolyard Sports National Championship March Madness winner is the Texas Longhorns, everybody. Texas wins the national championship. That's my national championship pick. I hate to do it. Hook them horns, I guess. If I picked Arizona, I would have done horns down. Let's show it one more time. Right there, Texas wins the national championship. That rounds out our score sports bracket. Leave thoughts in the comment section. Rodney Terry becomes interim head coach to win the national championship. Maybe he gets the head coach's job now. I think he has to win the national championship. That's bad for the national championship pick. That's bad for score sports and lane. Frank, episode 115. Let's fill in that final Texas Longhorns national champion 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Follow Squirt Sports on Instagram at Squirt Sports. Follow Squirt Sports on Twitter at Squirt Sport. Awesome sports kind of content. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review to the best sports content in the world. Get ready for March Madness. Get ready for your brackets. Here's the perfect bracket right here. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. That's back for my bracket. Thanks for watching. Episode 115.